Right, mail bag time again. Let's see what we've got in here this time. That's interesting. That's definitely interesting. Don't know about the other stuff. These are some HDMI capture card things. These have got a surprisingly good reputation. Here's a manual. People have been trying these since they find actually been working okay. So there's the specs. That's what it looks like. So I'll pack you on two of those. I thought it would be quite a handy things to have because I've currently got one USB to HDMI capture device. If that ever fails and I don't have one. And these are cheap. These are a fraction of the cost of the thing I bought before. And people seem to reckon they work alright, so I'm actually going to plug one in now and try it out. And I'll capture some more video from my camera onto my computer and I'll insert that now. Right, so I'm going to record this on OBS and on my camera. Now, the lag on OBS it is slightly noticeable, it's probably about 100 milliseconds behind when I'm moving. So, I'm going to overlay this audio with the clip. And you can see what the output looks like. This is streaming straight from my camera. So as the camera would record it, I'm streaming that to OBS with the output, HDMI output from the camera. So we'll see how it comes out. Seems to work at least. It's 1080p too. There's different brands. I've seen different branding on them. They're all basically the same thing with different names on. Single HDMI, USB output. Well, these two devices are very slightly different. One's grey, one's black. And one's got a white inner on the connector. The other one's got a blue inner, which is USB 3, this is USB 2. I plugged this in, no setting changes, I set this one up already, the USB 3 one, to obviously capture this camera here, and I just plugged this one in its place and it worked just the same, no setting changes, 1080p, it seemed fine. On the same port, that's a USB 3 port, but obviously it's only using USB 2. I think this might be using USB 2, but on a USB 3 connector, I think that's the... The fake bit of these is that it's a USB 3 connector, but it's actually not using USB 3, it's only using USB 2, which is why it doesn't matter which one you use, I think. Now, yes, it's a bang good bag, but it's not a sponsorship item. I purchased this myself. I was actually trying to get it to free, but um, I wasn't having much luck. Not from Banger, but from uh, the manufacturer, because it's one of these things. It seem to be the in thing to have these days, and they look pretty cool, so I thought I'd get one. I did approach Miniware, and after about two weeks, they did finally respond. But it's a bit slow, and by then I already bought one. An interesting thing is I saw Miniware approaching some other YouTubers, like Brian Locke for example. He wasn't interested because it's not the sort of thing he does, is reviews, doesn't do reviews. He said no thanks, and I said hey, I'll do it. Anyway, they never replied. <laughs> yeah, well, never mind, can't do everything. So I had to buy this one. Oh! How do you get into this thing? It's got this pull tab thing, but nothing pulls. STG has shown this thing himself as well. The STG's have one of these things working. A USB-C connection. I'm not sure about the buttons being on the back. I wish the buttons were on the front. I could have put them like there. Would have been nice. Anyway, there's a cable in there somewhere if I can get into the box. Yeah, I'm trying to go with flash packaging, which is nice, but you know, I'd rather have them slightly cheaper to packaging and the price reduce somewhat. So USB C to C cable. So I don't currently have a USB C charger. I have purchased one. I don't know if it's arrived. I don't think it has a bunch of other mailbag stuff here to do yet. So I can't power this up yet. Apparently these things fold out somehow doesn't want to fold out. Maybe it doesn't. I don't know. I've seen people fold these out. doesn't want to move. That's helpful. I guess I won't force it. So this thing, in case you're not aware of what this MHP 30 is, it's like a miniature hot plate. So if you're doing PCB rework or um, SMD stuff, you know, um, if you're any, especially you've got a small circuit board, it's good. It's obviously a really small hot plate. So you can put the board on that and work on this one part of the board without heating the whole thing up, which is why I got this, because it'd be really handy, because I've got things like this, and maybe sometimes I want to rework one part of it over here, for example, and that will require heating the whole thing up otherwise, or hot air. But if I use that, it means I can rework that bit quite easily. My wife commented on this just now. Clients can be used by children aged 8 years and above and persons with reduced physical, sensory and mental capabilities. Well, that's generous of them, isn't it? Lack of experience or knowledge if they have been given supervision and instruction. It's a nice little safety disclaimer. So you can use it if you're thick, but as long as someone's shown how to do it. Right. Pretty simple really. Don't touch the hot bit. So you go, here's instructions for it. Warning can get hot, really. That's what it's meant to do. I hope it gets hot. Temperature range 100 to 350 degrees C, which should be fine for most things. It's got some factory presets in there, which are handy if you want to do a quick usage. 60 watt power on 20 volts, that's obviously using power delivery system from USB-C. I've got no experience with USB-C, like I said, I don't even own a charger right now or a power supply. I've had to purchase one just so I can run this thing. It's a hot plate. 
This thing I stumbled on recently, AliExpress advertised it to me, and I thought, well, oh, it looks interesting. So I've got some anyway, even though I don't really know if I need them, but at least it's a nice time of year, maybe winter I need it, but uh, what it's supposed to be is a film you stick on the window of the car, and it's basically waterphobic. So it means if you've got rain on your window, by, by your mirrors, which is as it demonstrates here, it means it doesn't block your view. There's a couple of them in there. And a cleaning kit thing. Hmm, handy splodger. Oh, black play these are really good or not. I don't even know if they'll last for a long time. I don't even know if they've got like a finite life which they'll cease to work in. I don't know. I thought it'd be interesting to have a look. They're pretty cheap things. The big seats down below. If you've got experience with these, let me know in the comments. Still got a big box at the back of the THL package. And these are a couple of drills, special ones. I purchased these because I was going to do some work on my car, but it looks like that's probably not going to happen now because I'm going to get some used to it. These are special drill bits. Oh, sticky. It's for drilling out spot welds. So that screws on, so when it wears out, you can turn it around, use the other side. It's got like a little centre point there, which I thought would be a drill, but apparently it's not. I guess you have to use a little small, small drill first and then shove that through to guide it. And then drill all the uh, spot weld out with that. Anyway, got two of those because they do wear out. Been a few times I wished I could drill out spot welds. Five sixteenths. Three eighths. Dunno, it looks the same to me. I guess it's not the same size. No, oh, yeah, that is bigger. Take a bag. In it somewhere. One in five three nine nine diodes. One kilovolt, one point five amp rectifier diodes. My Fluke 343A is being a little bit touchy at the moment. It's being very unstable. Anything above about probably 600 volts or so is getting a bit touchy. I'm thinking maybe I've got some diodes breaking down. It could be something else. But I thought, well, I'll give it another birthday. I've already gone through and replaced all the capacitors in it. I did that when I first got it a few years ago. So I know the capacitors will be good. I'm very unlikely to have any problems with them. Unless I've been unlucky, of course. I'll go through and I'll get all the parts I need in case I need to replace anything else while I'm doing it bit of a service on it. So I've got some diodes here, I've got some other bits coming as well and I'll pull it apart, clean all the switches up properly and if it still plays up I'll start replacing diodes because sort of activity you would see if it's a diode breaking. Yeah so these things are pretty unusual diodes, the first time I've come across them, that's why I bought a bunch of them. Relatively cheap too, just diodes, but I have to make sure I replace like for like and this sort of thing. I mean it's a calibrator, it needs to work exactly the same way as it did from factory. Alright, last thing. I'll get into it. It's an AC DC current probe CP2100B from Mixig. That's a box out of the box. There you go. So this actually came from Dave. It's got a USB cable in there. And let's do 10 amps and 100 amps at 2.5 megahertz and resolution of 0.1 volts or 0.01 volts per amp. There's been a few times I wish I had a current probe. Now I've got one. Not cheap. Sometimes you just need to pay the money and get the tool. So if you're not familiar with this thing, Dave has done videos on this on this EV block channel. That plugs up to your oscilloscope. You clamp this around the wire you want to measure the current from, and you'll get a current readout. So you can change it to be amps reading on your display on your oscilloscope instead of volts, and that will give you an amps reading. And you just set the scaling to suit this, and then you can read out the amps drawn by your circuit and it will see instantaneous pulses of that, whereas the multimedia won't show those sorts of things, you'll see the average, but this will give you actual detail, which is great. So if you're not familiar with how these things work, there's some videos out there, so you can check out Dave's channel and he's got a video showing this exact thing on it. You'll see me use it one day in the future, or well, the next time I need to use something like this to measure currents on devices. There's different versions of this available, or different brands, there's lots of different ones out there, you can if you look on AliExpress as well. You've got different variants and you can actually get some which do quite low current so if you want to do very low current circuitry you can actually do those but they're very limited this is more of a general one which gives up to say 100 amps or 10 amps on those two ranges if you need something which does 5 amps you can get them or 1 amp even you can get them depends on what your requirements are i thought this would be fairly general purpose i mean 10 amps is the most likely scale i'm going to be using I was sort of juggling between this and a different one from aliexpress which has got a lower current rating in order to give more precision i thought oh, i'll go for this one Thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. Click the bell icon if you've not clicked it before in order to get notifications about my new videos. And I'll catch you next one.
Bye.